Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the ACHA.org website. My name is Lou Gamlin, and we are here again with another one of our play, Coach of the Year interviews. And today we would like to congratulate Rick Zombo as the ACHA Men's Division I Coach of the Year from Lindenwood University. Rick, congratulations. Thank you, Lou. I appreciate it. Well, Rick, uh, you know, it's been a crazy year, crazy 18 months, a lot of ups and downs. Uh, but your squad at Lindenwood, again, another uh, very fine year, 16 and two overall throughout the year. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how this uh, crazy year has taken place for you. Um, well, it's a sour taste because we didn't win the national tournament. Uh, every season that we go in, it's about winning one game, which is the last game of the season. Um, core of my group I've had for the last three years and I felt in all three years we had a team that could have won a national title and uh, being there so frequently as Lindenwood usually is uh, it's just not always the best team it's you got to get the good timing and, and uh, good bounces and an awful lot of luck um, and then when you don't you always try to uh, reflect and retool uh, and that's pretty much um what happens two days after the decompression of losing. Um, and then uh, you go back to work. So it's, it's never ending. The season itself um, was different. Um, we didn't play our normal schedule. Uh, usually our schedule is pretty easy to put together as far as finding opponents because uh, uh, there's a lot of teams that want to play us. Uh, they want to establish themselves or measure themselves up to Lindenwood and also assist them in the rankings, even though that they do lose. Um, but we primarily, perennially, the teams that we play are usually in the top 12 anyway. And uh, that wasn't the case this year. We pretty much stayed to our uh, close proximity as far as geography goes. You know, there's states and universities that are far more uh, risk adverse than us. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, to start the season in January um, made it challenging. As a coach, it made it challenging because normally I spend the whole season uh, preparing for depth. Uh, depth to me is just not numbers of players, it's giving players opportunities and, and uh, uh, having the proper, proper type of uh, resistance through opponents uh, to prepare to win four games in a row. Um, so was, we had to expedite a lot of stuff. I mean, we're on the ice in the fall, uh, being on the ice in the fall, um, it got to be groundhog day for myself because I was running four consecutive pods of 15 players running the same practice. Uh, and then that's for our, our total program. So not only my team that plays at the division one level, but also our division two, uh, team. Um, and, uh, I recognized that their only sense of normalcy to campus life was coming to the rink. And, and then I had to shake off my groundhog day feeling and soldier through it, you know? So Monday to Thursday in the fall was, uh, something special for the players to come to the rink, um, uh, to be around us, to be around their teammates. Um, and, uh, it was well needed for all of us. You know, I look, I look at your team, Rick, and again, it was very strong. And what really stood out to me, you know, with the shortened season was on the defensive side, led by Steven Friedland, you know, in net, uh, he had a stellar year for you, I think his goals against was under one. And, uh, you know, he looked like he was one of the leaders, but on the offensive side of the ice, you guys were very balanced and. Looking back, that looks like a staple of uh, one of your uh, coach teams over the years is a, a very good balance of scoring and also on defense. Um, yeah, uh, Stephen had a tremendous year. As a sophomore, had a tremendous year. People don't realize, and if, if people were to dig into uh, his junior career, um, he had obnoxiously bad stats. Um, uh, there is no side show or theatrics to him. He was just a hundred percent competitor in a, in a bad situation for Steven and given the right opportunities and, and the right structure that our team plays in, 
uh, he excelled. Um, I gave him a start uh, last year in our conference finals to, to win Central States in, in our conference is a major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I gave him the final game. Uh, that was not only a test for him, but a test for me and, and uh, accountability amongst our players. You got to be able to play in big games. And, and uh, he was absolutely phenomenal. And I think his freshman year, he might have played a half a dozen games. Um, due to the fact that, and even for outskaters, college is, uh, college hockey is difficult because you're only playing two games on a weekend. So when you're on a high, uh, you've got five days of cooling down or even worse, if you're in a slump, you only got five days to get yourself up and you need games to either, you know, ride the high or, or dig yourself out of the slump. That's challenging for college hockey. Um, but, but Stephen Friedland had an unbelievable uh, season, um, unbelievable uh, stats, um, but even a better person, which is uh, a lot of people don't see that on the outside looking in. Uh, our team, um, we like to score goals. Uh, I think we defend with the puck. We spend a considerable amount of time trying to score goals. Um, so to have balanced scoring, um, there's no player that feels like they've scored enough, but to have balanced scoring gives us an opportunity to win games. And, and, uh, we scored an, an awful lot of goals, uh, early and then, uh, teams started getting sharp on us and the level started solidifying. You know, again, and then you mentioned a little bit about the uh, conference championship this year you didn't get to play a regular season, but you were able to get a conference tournament uh, in at the end of the year and you were victorious in that. So that uh, gave you, had to make you feel you know, good going into nationals, even though you didn't get the result that you were looking for. Yeah, that conference tournament, unfortunately, there were only three teams participated and there was Ohio, Iowa State and ourselves. Uh, the absence of Robert Morris, uh, the absence of Illinois, I mean, uh, two really strong programs. Um, if you come in on our conference as a fifth seed, you got to win three games straight, and it's been done before. I think Robert Morris has done it. Um, but everything, uh, for me anyway, is peaking at the right time and making certain that not only that you're healthy, uh, but confident to know that you can play big games. And when I say big games, um, the game's not changing. You know, it's still 60 minutes and inside of 85 by 200, right? Um, but uh, the repercussions for failure are, and all season uh, is probably a broken record, but uh, I'm pretty detail oriented. And uh, I see things that um, I don't allow to, uh, to slide by because um, there's so much at stake on one game, uh, each shift, even the preparation and warm ups in the night before. Um, has a way of showing itself. And especially when you've got to grind through uh, three preliminary games before you get to the, to the final, um, there's an awful lot of attrition and fatigue when you get there. And, and I always say that the first game's the hardest in our national tournament. Um, by the time you get to, and we didn't, but you get to the final game, um, your energy level is probably on fumes, but you're, you're so excited and so high that uh, it's robotic and you just play. But it's, it's, it's the three games leading up. And, yeah. uh, the type of competition that you're playing is uh, it's a hard grind. Now, in that national tournament setting, Rick, is it, does the defense tend to sharpen up a little bit in that? Is it, uh, or is it just like you said, you know, there's more at stake and, maybe some of the kids think a little bit more, you know, than they do maybe during the regular season game and just makes it that much more difficult. Uh, how, how does that play into it? In, in, in national games, um, a lot of teams uh, play not to lose. Okay. Uh, so they keep it extremely simple and, and uh, cross their fingers on capitalize on mistakes, capitalize on, uh, uh, special teams, uh, or ride a real hot goaltender. Uh, if you play a very defense-oriented uh, structure uh, game, 
uh, you're usually in it. You, you usually have a really good chance. And that's why um, most of the games are a difference of one or two goals. Um, I, I don't think that was the case this year because um, the talent level is lopsided because 16 teams made it and, and uh, yeah. maybe the bottom half uh, has not had the history of making it as they normally do. Um, so that's probably why you had a lot, you know, our opening game. Um, I mean, we like to score goals and my guys like to score goals, but uh, I was trying to slow them down. Right. It didn't work. Rick, you've been with uh, Lindenwood now, I believe this was your 11th year, if I'm not mistaken, and or 12th, and you've made the national tournament each time. And, uh, you know, what, what's been the secret? You know, I know you can't share all of them, but, you know, it, it's been a heck of a run. And, you know, you, you did, you have had one national championship. Uh, you've been to the semifinals a, a handful of times. What's been your secret to uh, achieving the success and keeping it at the level that you've been at? First thing is that I have a wonderful coaching staff. I've got a coaching staff that I don't big time them. They don't big time me. We, we, we know our strengths. We stay in our strengths. And we challenge each other. We're always challenging each other uh, to get better. Um, we are always in the process of learning, uh, trying new things. Um, I, I know the type of player that I like to coach. I know the type of team that, that I want to coach. Um, and there's other ways to win games, but I have to be comfortable with the players in front of me. Um, our recruiting, we probably... Uh, attribute our success to recruiting. We spent a considerable amount of time on recruiting those players that I want to coach. And uh, it's difficult because uh, to play for Lindenwood, it's, it's really emphasized as we. So when you say our scoring is distributed, uh, there's no way I'm going to build a team around uh, one player, uh, players that need supplemental help. Uh, we do it collectively. We defend it collectively. Uh, and not only do we win, but we also lose collectively. I mean, our Monday to Thursday, I believe, is harder than the Friday, Saturday. So uh, I, I made certain that uh, through recruiting, uh, there was not going to be one player that um, will hold me over the barrel. Uh, I want to make certain as soon as somebody slipped, uh, we didn't lose any type of uh, – talent base and we have a replacement to step in and, and we're, so when I say I'm, I'm building depth um, uh, I give everybody an opportunity in power play penalty kill uh, big minutes short minutes double shift I want to see what they can handle and, and uh, over a year things kind of settle in like they know the rotation they know who's up after a goal that you know they know uh, what we need to do and uh, um we always play our way, but um, there, there's, uh, for me, uh, I've pre-scouted a couple of weeks before our, our opponent. So through the practice structure, um, we work on concepts and tendencies and, and ice locale uh, for the next opponent. But if we don't play the way that we're structured and the way that we're built, uh, we're not going to play counterattack because you're always on your heels. So. We know what we're doing. We know who we're playing. And, you know, Rick, uh, you know, we've talked in the past and, you know, the game has changed in regards to recruiting a little bit. I, you know, I know it's almost like a 12 month a year job for you now, if you want to stay. For us, it is. For yeah. us, it is. For the good yeah. teams, the good programs. And, yeah. you know, the coaches that I talk to, they say as soon as that season's over, either that night or the next day you're on the phone or, now yeah. you're on a Zoom call or whatever with a recruit. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's no time off anymore, is there? No, there really isn't. You know, people on the outside world don't recognize that as coaches, we wish we had 25 hours in a day <laughs> um, to actually watch game, um, depending on the age and the level. Um, can be cumbersome. Uh, for me to watch junior games, or youth hockey games during NHL playoffs, it's excruciating for me because uh, my sleep pattern is all screwed up because I try to watch every NHL playoff game. Yeah. Um, 
but I've got a staff that um, they know what I'm looking for. Uh, they're good at it. Um, and the, the Zoom calls have actually really helped us in recruiting um, because we don't have the resources to get everywhere. Yeah. And you can get an awful lot out of a conversation um, face-to-face, even though that we're, we're, we're via the web. Uh, it really sells a lot. And, and for me, um, <clears throat> we're about 95% uh, percent successful when we have uh, recruits come visit campus. And, and that's not only um, the school and the rink sell itself, but also we do face-to-face. Okay. And having face-to-face, um, I ask the hard questions. Um, I mean, if they're rocking on their heels, they're not really ready for Lindenwood. Um, so uh, even though uh, recruiting is sales, uh, mine's not a soft sell. I mean, this, this is what we do. And, you know, especially if the parents are there, uh, they're going to learn more from me and my coaching staff in four years and the money they spend on books because um, it's details and, and we're punctual. And, and uh, uh, there's more than statistics, whether it be goals and assists and wins and losses. It's, you know, when responsibilities really mean something uh, and you don't have uh, a team behind you or, or coaching staff supporting you, um, that's the most important thing, being a Lindawood hockey player, that you can handle the adult life. Rick, when you get a chance to uh, maybe, I don't know, decompress for, I don't know, a week or a few days, what do you like to do as a hobby or anything just to kind of get yourself recharged? I fish. I'm, I'm an outdoors guy. I fish. I, uh, I, I live a, uh, it's, it's tough for people to recognize, but I choose, uh, I live in the woods. Uh, I hunt, I fish. Um, coaching is a, a lonely life. Uh, it, it's, um, I mean, you have to make really hard decisions and um, you have to be well prepared. Uh, kids are sharp nowadays and you have to really spend time uh, building trust and getting to know them. And, and it is a tremendous amount of commitment in the communication skills um, for me. And, and I learned it every year. Um, but I don't have a huge vocabulary when it comes to soft sell. I mean, it's <clears throat> to be politically correct doesn't work for me. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a very passionate person. Uh, and if I have to explore words of softness or, or condolences, uh, it's not addressed uh, properly. It almost comes off as phony. So um, call it tough love. Um, but I don't yell or scream. You know, it's like... <clears throat> Everybody has choices. These are adults. These are young adults. They know what's right or wrong. Um, and to assist them in the process of mistakes, we welcome mistakes. As far as the coaching staff in Lindenwood, uh, if, if my team plays with sport coats on, we're not full throttle. We don't want hesitation. We, we have systems primarily to back up our mistakes. Um, so mistakes are always on me or slash system. Um, but you know, uh, no, no different. All these kids know how to get an A in class and I don't walk them to class. Um, and they choose whether they want to get an A or not. No, you know, um, we have a 3.0 grade point initiative that, uh, we have imposed and have had imposed for a hockey program. Um, our guys do it. You go to class. You, that's why you go to school. You know, this is, it's, it's not cumbersome. I want, I want kids that are abnormal, okay? Normal C or average doesn't work for me. So we got a 3.0, I don't lock you, but you know what? Your whole team's in class. So, and you know, no different than a weight room. You're gonna have those down days where fatigue is set in. You don't wanna go to a weight room. That's why you have a lifting partner. That's why you, that's why you have a team. So uh, I don't have to police that, you know, it's, uh, and, and mistakes are part of growing up. And I, and I say it in life, no different than on the ice. There's answers and solutions to mistakes. If, if you want to mope about it, you're going to miss two or three plays in our game. You know, you just got to roll through it. So it's, it's a lot of life and, and uh, 
tough love. It's, um, every one of my players, I, I consider myself, and they don't know it, um, but a crisis friend. Okay, so when I say a crisis friend, um, uh, they should know if they're really in need, they can call me and I'd be there, right? Mm -hmm. But on every day, we're not not having a beer, we're not chumming. Right. Uh, I'm probably somewhat jealous of my assistant coaches because they're in a position where they can get closer. Um, it doesn't mean they're all Santa Claus. I mean, you know, my, my assistant coaches are extremely good. Uh, it's the same message. I mean, we talk hockey and talk our players. I mean, every day our players are getting scouted by us. And um, you have to be ahead of the curve and, and sense where something's not wrong because um, hockey players are, are uh, very humble, if not bullheaded, and they refuse to uh, present a weakness. And, and nowadays, uh, kids are extremely soft uh, between the ears and also in willingness or willpower or intestinal fortitude. So we got to get ahead of that before it gets too deep. Well, Rick, I appreciate you taking time out with us. Congratulations again on uh, winning the award as uh, ACHA Men's Division One Coach of the Year. Uh, good luck again next year. Look forward to talking to you again soon down the road. Thank you very much for your time. It's, it's a big accomplishment. There's so many really, really good coaches that don't get enough credit. And uh, to be on top this year is uh, pretty proud of it. But I, I had the players and the staff to help me. Thanks, Luke. You bet.